Well, let's go ahead and let's move on and we will talk about Hollywood uh, and what I believe is the glorification of, uh, of mental health struggles uh, and how the industry kind of perpetrates that culture on their, you know, the, the celebrities that work there. We know that through Disney. We know that through uh, musicians like Machine Gun Kelly and this thing that we're going to talk about here uh, and how then they also virtue signal about these things. So it says, uh, the first article says, Machine Gun Kelly snapped and put loaded shotgun in his mouth uh, during call with Megan Fox. It says, Machine Gun Kelly detailed a disturbing phone call he made to Megan Fox shortly after his, uh, the death of his father in 2020, a call which Kelly put a shotgun in his mouth and nearly pulled the trigger. Now, what's the first thing I thought of was like when me and you first started covering all this stuff, they just feel so try hard, their relationship, right? Totally. We were talking, like they feel like they're trying to be 22 years old. Not 22. They, they sound 15. and look like they're trying to pretend that they're in high school yeah. even. Um, for Machine Gun Kelly, I believe he may actually be mentally stuck there. Well, that's uh, and it, but I'm so, like uh, so they Hollywood is consistently talking about mental health. It, mm -hmm. it goes along with it's 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 a very good goal to have. It is a good thing to bring awareness to. Yeah. But they both tell you that you need to focus on that while fostering an industry that absolutely does not work or compute yeah. well mm -hmm. with that type of behavior. Yeah. How many times do we have to talk about uh, Doja Cat having her meltdown on Twitter about wanting to quit music, uh, likely from stress of what's going on doing her job, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like they, they have a very high stress industry, but then they virtue signal yeah, about... In, in the case of Doja Cat, I think that actually was a real uh, meltdown that she was having about it and a real uh, conflict about whether she wanted to continue, but then she played it off as a joke. Yeah. So yeah. that no I find her to be very authentic. Yeah. I don't find Machine Gun Kelly authentic in the, in the slightest. So he, no. and, and to me, this is also, this is drug, this is a culture of drugs and drug abuse, which to mm -hmm. be fair, Hollywood doesn't, I mean, music glorifies it a lot of times, but I, I don't think yeah. that his music no, glorifies no. it. His music is kind of just like, bubblegum pop punk now but yeah. but I'm, if i'm being if i'm being generous to the industry i could say that like for the most part uh hollywood like they like they don't show smoking on uh, on tv I, I think that's a weird distortion of what reality actually mm -hmm. is and i think right. that's kind of stupid mm -hmm. but it's not like they're telling it's you like that that's a good thing it's like countercultural in a an uncanny way yes like, not believable so yeah. but but i don't find that like for the most part they're going to 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 glorify drug use, but I do think that they glorify when these people go through struggles and have these incidents without acknowledging that they're the they're the, the industry is the reason these things happen. And at, at the same time, glorifying uh, Megan Fox and MGK's relationship as these twin flame soulmates who were meant to be together, and you know, Megan Fox was just a, a victim of circumstance all her life until she found her. her soulmate mgk and they're just perfect for each other yeah. when in reality this is happening behind the scenes yep. so it says uh, this is the the musician made the confession in his new hulu documentary machine gun kelly's life in pink so it says i flew to my dad's apartment to clear out all his stuff i had this really weird interaction with the neighbor who told me to uh, told me all these things i didn't want to hear and that effed me up even more even more because i couldn't get closure on it and kelly who was opened up in the past about having a tough relationship with his father due to his unruliness as a Teen. I wouldn't leave my room and I started getting really, really, really dark, Kelly continued in the doc. Megan went to Bulgaria to shoot a movie and I started getting this really wild paranoia. Like, I kept getting paranoid that someone was going to come and kill me. Oh, it was him. She says, uh, I would always sleep with this shotgun next to my bed. I also want to point out that these are the people that talk about gun control yeah. and have they no, all like, own them. and, and mm -hmm. like, but, the, but like, have like, you think of this, you think of Ezra Miller having a compound with guns just laying they around own them and misuse them and assume that everybody else, else does. Did. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever, if you've ever talked to anyone who's proficient in firearms or uses firearms, uh -huh. you're supposed to treat that weapon with a lot of deference because you know that you can, that it's very powerful. Uh, and, and they do not treat the owning the use or the care of a firearm in any type of light or in any type of light I, don't, I don't think mgk is you know in any state of mind to be around a lethal exactly yeah. so it says uh, i would always sleep with my shotgun next to my bed one of the days i just effing snapped i called megan i was like you aren't here for me i'm in a room and i'm like freaking out on her he called i put the shotgun in my mouth and i'm yelling on the phone and like the barrels in my mouth and i go to cock the shotgun and the and the bullet as it comes back up and the shell just gets jammed 
saying Fox was like dead silent at that point. He said that's when he realized something's not right, and he pointed it at his own head. He said both Megan and his daughter Cassie came to him separately and expressed concern as well, telling him, I want to be able to see you in your eyes. I don't want to I don't want to be like talking to, to you through a veil anymore. I want to see you as my father. I want to see you as my husband to be. They've glorified this relationship. Mm. As these, uh, how would you just, I didn't even know how to describe it. They uh, always uh, harped on them being twin flames. Uh, star, uh, not star cross lovers, but the, uh, like, they, like they were meant to be together. Yeah. And like it's this, soulmates, it's, right? it's That's supposed to be. Like, yeah, yeah. Right? You're just like, you're meant to be soulmates. When did they ever say that though? I never saw that. It, says, it was a big thing. Really? Like when they first. When they first uh, started drinking the blood and stuff? Well, I mean, that came later, but overall, like the theme of their relationship is no one understands us. We're just like the only people who understand each other. Did, did you ever buy them? Like, did you ever buy the relationship no. as something authentic? I, no. And I always thought it was like just on the surface level. Like, right. so and what's funny, obviously like fake and right. contrived at people who are not that interesting in their private lives, it's just but want to pretend to be the generic sad, brand Kardashian. The sad part is, is she's really intelligent and it's she, like, I mean, I don't even think that Megan Fox is like really intelligent. I think she's just intelligent enough that she's like good at speaking. And, you know, given that she's also incredibly attractive, yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. a remarkable the combination. Is, the bar is low for, but actors. she believes herself to be way more intelligent than she is. And when she starts like talking about astrology and relationships mm. and feminism and blah, 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 right. she really thinks that she's just like a galaxy brain. I saw someone in an interview once talk about how like they believe she was like a, an idiot too. And then like, she happened to be reading a book on set as right, if like, like Oh my she's goodness. A person. That's it's <laughs> not that read. complicated. And that's all you need to realize <laughs> about celebrities to, right. to understand that they have their own dysfunctions. Right. Do you also remember when, when they made the big deal, it was like a big segment on all the night, the uh, late night talk shows where like he did ayahuasca uh, and he's like, oh, there was you remember that right? headline after headline uh, glorifying rounds of them glorifying the fact that they drink each other's blood um, and then the ayahuasca thing. So here's the next line in that article where it says, and, it, and I was like, I need to kick the drugs for real this time, said Kelly, who didn't mention whether he was using drugs at the time elsewhere in the story. He clearly was. Uh, the paranoia that, you do not, came. You do Something not they were saying the about the ayahuasca thing was like, it brought us closer together. Right. We trauma bonded. Right. Right, it's supposed I, to like cleanse your soul. Dude. As somebody who is like, for, yeah, given that I'm like in in recovery, but I'm also very libertarian in the concept of drugs because of personal responsibility, and would rather see mo see them distributed legally. Uh, through like clean facilities where mm. you know exactly how much you're getting rather than a bunch yeah. of people buying a bunch of pills that have been uh, I'm very torn about that. Okay, uh, but that's a whole other discussion so, but, but, I'm saying, like, but yeah to see that but then to see them glorify this type of behavior mm -hmm. when evidently somebody who is, is, can't handle it Yeah, he's yeah. got paranoid delusions now yep. that are making him suicidal and then he's uh, placing that burden on this his, mother who is his his girlfriend like it's insane. And I can I can empathize and feel awful for what he's going through. Losing his father, mm -hmm. he's struggling with addiction. I am I don't take issue with him being that way if he wants to get help, if he wants to get better, if he's working towards that. Mm -hmm. I take issue with the industry at large talking constantly about their mental about mental health and then allowing this stuff to be glorified. Now, to, to be devil's advocate, do you think it's good? to present these stories, even if they don't seem authentic to us, for people to be like, oh, wow, I should get help. It like, never comes off as authentic. That? It never does to me either. Yeah, you have but to maybe remember, they someone. selectively reveal oh, yeah. things. Oh, for sure. I'm jaded on that because on one hand, I could understand them, like the, the idea that that could help somebody. Right. But to me, you don't get help from something like that from a person you don't, from a celebrity. It, yeah, you, I you hope get, not. But in today's culture, where so many people do worship these people, I don't understand it. I feel like someone would be like, oh, I need to hear that. Like they would in, in some stupid song, you know, but I don't know. I, don't, I think it's gross. I think they're terrible role models for their children. So, so then we have this other story where he, he smashes a champagne glass in his own face at a concert. It's just like, I don't know why, but it's so Army Hammer vibes where you're just the most bland individual ever and you... Yeah do crazy things and try to look as weird as possible from the outside to compensate 
for he, how yes. uninteresting you are. Because like, I like a lot of bands where this might have happened on stage, right? Yeah, Th and that's the first. It's like, it's like it, but it doesn't come off as authentic. But here. for him, he looks like he's cosplaying yeah. this whole time. Totally. Like, like you know, like I know he had beef with a band I like, Slipknot, and I believed in Slipknot, like their antics on stage. Like they weren't just doing it. Uh, to to be like oh look at what I can do they were completely deranged if you watch their videos yeah. and they were they, it, you, they would probably do that if no one was watching them when he does it I look at this kid who's like you know he just got this freedom and he's got this look and he oh this it's looks so cool. try hard yeah and especially because like at his age he was I mean he was in the warp tour scene like I understand there's a spirit of like rock and roll Thank whatever you. but this is like so put on yeah was he in warp tour he's either he was, i don't know how old he is he's either 20 or 45 <laughs> he he 30s. was he was a rapper before he did oh like, yeah pop before, M eminem, before eminem embarrassed him, him. yeah i remember shot. like i first heard of him because he did a collab with sleeping with sirens okay so it says machine good? gun kelly was trying to yeah. get a crowd's attention when he decided to smash a glass against his face causing the punk rocker to gush blood all over himself tuesday night i think the the number one thing to pull away from both of this is is he keeps trying to get people's attention yeah. by physically harming himself. Yeah. Like, That's a is problem. That not worrying? Sounds like a 14 year old to and me. And it looks like it's working. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, how uh, stupid are we? Yeah. So it says, uh, it says uh, he first made his interest to the. Okay, they, they go down here. Basically, he talks about how like he's had multiple instances like this, and he says. Uh, uh, he, he joked that uh, yeah I'm going to have to start having doctors around me every time I see Seth Myers on my schedule because incidents keep happening where he gets uh, hurt uh, or does something like this and it's just we, we talk thank, thank you. you we talk about um, Dove Cameron uh, and, and this is why I wanted to kind of pull it around and make yeah. it more about the industry does this to them and then mm -hmm. brags about helping people fix it and also Dove Cameron is showing that uh, entertainers have a very warped view of what it is to take care of your mental you well -being. Lead, You want to do that? Want sure. So she got interviewed uh, for the LA Times. I picked out a few things that were interesting from this because a lot of it was just her self-indulgent talking about, you know, her music. And it's really not meaningful. But yeah. she, you know, ties in her queer identity and... Blah, blah, blah. That's not really what interests me about the article. Um, but when she started talking about how she fit in as like a Disney kid yeah. among a uh, previous generation of Disney kids that she never interacted with. Exactly. Um, so they asked her, plenty of women have preceded you in figuring out how to define themselves outside the Disney machine. Anyone whose journey you particularly admire? And she said... I never had that moment where I was like, I'm a Disney girl. I never looked at Miley or Demi or Selena or Zendaya or Bella or anybody, Hilary Duff or anybody that came before me and thought you and me are the same. I, I was always the strange outlier who doesn't belong and will never fit in. I had huge imposter syndrome. Uh, I didn't really look to anybody else for a roadmap. This whole narrative that I was on Disney and then found my way out with a pop song, it was a total effing accident. Um, she also uh, started talking about, you know, the stereotype that Disney kids are all, like, in recovery for the trauma that they experienced as, you know, child stars. Yeah. Um, and she said... I, I cannot stress this enough. My life has always been personal stuff first and career stuff like fourth. More often than not, my life is therapy, journaling, songwriting, poetry. I don't really run into people very often. Does anybody find it weird that therapy was the first thing that was mentioned? Yeah, I... This sounds like a sad life yeah like it, it doesn't sound like a, and that seems to be a fairly common occurrence among disney kids and that's why i wanted to pull it back to the industry being what messes these kids up because you're you're at that point if you say something like that as like you're the model for you know self-care or something um you clearly don't understand that you know adapting to becoming an adult especially after being an entertainer uh means that you're you're able to you know socialize you're you're a socialized ad adjusted person mm. and you don't spend all of your time like on zoom with a therapist 
or like writing poetry and like getting DoorDash. <laughs> I always wonder, like, when, whenever like I'm I'm a serial IMDb or when I'm watching stuff, I love looking up about every actor uh, that I'm that I, if they give a performance that I like, I like to get at least uh, a snapshot insight into like basic things in their life. And I always love when they put like they enjoy and it's always these things. It's like writing poetry, going horseback riding. I'm like, do they actually Long sit around? On the do yeah. they actually right. sit around and write poetry? If so, that's freaking awesome. But it's just always really funny when no, I no and I another. See that. Th- thing is like um dove cameron is notorious for doing excessive photoshop on all of her pictures which is weird because she's an attractive enough person exactly yeah she's she's beautiful but she has such a distorted self-perception and she doesn't interact uh, from her own admission Mm. she does not interact with people very often um so sad and i just i'm i simply don't believe that she's you know (laughs) <laughs> living her life by self improvement, like writing poetry, yeah. therapy that actually has an end goal. So, I think she's talk sitting about. on her phone and obsessing over what people say about her. Something I wish people would learn at a younger age, which is probably impossible, is to stop comparing yourself to others. Yep. And like the one thing that stuck out to me in that first part you read, Mary, is where she said she I never looked at Miley or Demi or uh, any of those names and thought like that's like me. Like I'm sure all of those people felt similar you know, looking around at other people at Disney and stuff. And like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's okay to not be like, I'm not like that person, I think. And it's just hard to understand that at a young age. The, the concept of imposter syndrome rang true to me. I, I get that Absolutely. entirely. Like that, yeah. that makes perfect sense to me. But I mean, I just thought she was trying very hard to assert her own uniqueness among yeah. other child stars. And like she's done a better job of differentiating herself mm. somehow when but, I, She's like one of the least known Hasn't worked because I never heard of her <laughs> Yeah exactly <laughs> But it's also It's because they Like it's like Just talking about These things And, uh, and being able to Intellectualize these ideas Doesn't mean you're Actually doing the work Mm-hmm. Like no. uh, they talk about therapy, they talk about this, they talk about that. But how, how much progress do we actually make if we're externalizing it all the time in unhelpful situations? Like just talking about going to therapy with people doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually getting the most out of it. And we talk all the time about the problem about therapy that doesn't have an end goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not helpful if you're just like obsessing over it all the time. And there's right. just a, a would you say, Mary, that you, you would attribute some of this to like a, a lack of faith or, or a lack of uh um, we've talked mm-hmm. about that before. Like, uh, you think it's just the the cultural decline that we're in right now that people feel the these problems are more prevalent? Um, yeah. I mean, I want to avoid uh, always, you know, harping on it. Yeah. But yeah, we're in a time of cultural decay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think child stars are feeling that maybe the strongest of of most people you or know? just any young person on their phone on their you, who lives in their phone mm-hmm. you do still have a, an option to shut it off right yep. um but like in a way if you're dove cameron selena gomez miley cyrus all of these people your name has kind of been stolen your image has been stolen from you yeah. before you had the judgment for you know to decide if you actually wanted that yeah. did we say this might, might have been last time we were on we were talking about the, or i was on is uh when you become famous like that's the age you're stuck at C- oh so, yeah so oh like, that is so britney spears right yep. it's a lot of them you know yeah. except for maybe who's made it out hillary duff came out fairly normal but hillary she? duff came out normal because she got her role as lizzie mcguire through her father who was producing the show who mm. I'm sure went out of his way to make sure that she was kept True. sheltered from True. the worst aspects of it. True. Well, Miley Cyrus's dad could Ryan Billy Gosling. Ray Cyrus could have done a better job. There are some Ryan Gosling who, made like, it out. Who skate by like I think Miranda Cosgrove is one of them. She said like her parents introduced the idea of her acting for uh, to save up her college fund, right. and then she ended up actually fulfilling that promise. That's cool. Mm-hmm. But most of them, I, Jeanette McCurdy, her co-star included are victims of it yeah they're not benefiting yeah, off look of at it. christina aguilera oh look what she, she was wearing yeah a few she, weeks ago she's kind of a mess right now uh, when did she start she was same with age britney, as britney spears, spears same class yep. with ryan gosling were and they Justin in Timberlake. Timberlake. mickey mouse club yep mickey yeah. mouse club wow yep. Yep. yep all right there's some super chats yes thank Ooh. you wolf spain said child stars need more like dylan and cole sprouse 
left Hollywood for college and went down their own path. Mm. Also, thank their parents for raising them. Mm. I, I mean, there's like, it's interesting. Well, some of my favorite articles to read, uh, even as somebody who's not religious, are the ones who walk away uh, and just like, we were talking about Alexa Panavega yesterday. Uh, I mentioned her slightly, her and her husband, uh, Carlos Panavega, they like left Hollywood, moved to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, they met in Bible study. And, and like, right. I love that story. Like, because yeah. it just seems so like, they're like, they said like Hollywood doesn't really care about family. There's like, right. that was a big part of the article. She's like, yeah. look, they seem to act like family's lame, but family's important to me. Uh, yeah. And that, you know, I don't know if that's a credit to their good parenting yep. or just the fact that they felt uh, calling like that. But that, yeah. that speaks to me in an industry full of degeneracy and in struggles. I, I like to yes. see people who escape it um, on their own terms. It's almost mm -hmm. like you have to be a shell of a human to exist in that world. Yep, because like, they turn you into whatever they need you to be. Exactly. And like you turn around and you do like a Norman Rockwell painting of a family as a, you know, in a scene. And then you turn back around and you're like this vapid husk, which is weird that they can fake it, but not a really scary. Yeah. That's which exactly is, like what they were trying to depict in um, the black mirror episode starring Miley Cyrus, mm. uh, where she played her, you know, pop star alter ego. <laughs> not, not it. that subtle of a right. message, right? Ashley. O. <laughs> <laughs> um, where she, she was literally getting replaced by a hologram of herself. Oh, shoot. Um, We're almost there in this reality. Yeah. yeah it's ha I, I, it's I, happening, I guys. sent her a, a, an Instagram earlier of this really creepy deep fake of Tom Cruise. Uh, oh, I've with, been watching those. Paris Hilton. It's really it, creepy. It, I would have believed that had Tom Cruise looked a little bit closer to his current age right. in that video. They're, those deep but fakes of him are amazing. It was completely like... It was like 99% there. Was it really Paris Hilton or was it a Paris Hilton deep fake as well? It was Paris Hilton deep fake. Yeah. I, I just got a message from Dane that Pop Culture Crisis made it to 30K. You guys brought yeah. me on to do this to me on air? <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. Take that, no, Shane No, I'm, I'm happy for you guys. I You guys deserve it. No, don't try it. to be the bigger but person But everybody, now. go now. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. You're going to like pour marbles no, all over amazing. the That's amazing. What so people don't slip. realize is that once you release on the first, that the it's going to build very, but very quickly. That's amazing, but I'm out of here. I quit. <laughs> I <laughs> fucking no. Imagine if I no, already the be, rugged man. To be fair, like you have a different pace of content. Oh, so. I like how everyone's nice now that you hit 30 Now that we won, you people. we can have a very oh, measured well, response. Let's talk to shit. He does. He'll be fine. Yeah. Um, we're burning this place down. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, like I'm gonna come, we're gonna come up here tomorrow. There's gonna be like an inverted world skull like tacked yeah. to the wall. I'm gonna drop like pig's blood on you now. No. <laughs> no. That would uh, be kind of a vibe. Congrats, guys. Uh, There's some more super chats. D you deserve it. Bad offset. And thanks to Dane for letting us know <laughs> like you, while Dane. we're on air. What the heck? Yeah, thank you. I don't know if that was meant to be shared, but it felt like it was meant to be shared. Oh, yeah, he really of wanted us to have the, the live He's, He was hoping for a fight, I think. He was yeah, hoping for yeah. me and Shane. Thanks, Dane. No, but we're That's good so nice of you. people. We're friends here. They were berating me before we started <laughs> filming. Don't you believe a word she says? And Brett, <laughs> he's, he sounds like he's nice. You should hear him before this. Mm -hmm. I'm over this. It's you fairly guys. true, actually. It um, actually is true. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really mean, guys. Oh my goodness! Not it's all an act. Wait till he unleashes it. S someday, someday. All I'll right. do a behind there's the scenes. There's some more. <laughs> Bad up said MGK is a wannabe scene bean. Kurt Cobain. Nobody yes. wants Oof. that. Nobody wants Word. that. Well, apparently there is some audience for it. It's not me, but it's true. Ugh. Yeah. Hate to say it. Sage Catharsis said for five dollars and ten cents. Oh, that's a strange amount. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, this is a lot. <laughs> Please talk about. Um, I, I don't know. Comic, wait. <laughs> comic books. Uh, comic books. Beast. Hank McCoy's transracial trials. Fixing blackness. No mutantness. Uh, X Factor. Friends. Uh, I, I don't know. It's not one that I'm familiar with. Is this a bot? Uh, I that, mean, thanks for the five dollars. It's just vomiting words. It's a, it seems like it. Do bots have money now? That would be cool. Are you a bot? I mean, give us the bot money. No, I'm care. not. I, I like that, that sound. That absolutely sounds like a real thing. Uh, but what does it sound? I, I, don't, like, I didn't catch uh, any of that. Uh, so. I mean, given how, how crazy comics are and how bad they are nowadays, it could absolutely be a real thing. <laughs> uh, um, I We're MKLR uh, said only watching the new James Bond uh, <laughs> if they cast Elliot Page. <laughs> oh, so exciting. That would be, you know what? I would I would actually watch it. I, I would watch it for the partial And we would review what it. What would be funny oh. is I would watch it for the lulls and then it ends up being really, really good and then you're like, damn it, 
Why hey, is it, if it's good, it's good. Exactly. You have it's to. Good, it's good. Uh, one thing that I've been focusing more on is separating art from artist because yes. it used to be that I could just not read the stuff that annoying celebrities right. say uh, and still watch their art. Uh, right. But now, because this is work and I don't get to just pick and choose what what we cover. Uh, I mean, I do, but like I, I still have to read through like all the Roe v. Wade stuff that we've had to read through is just insane. You can't save yourself from the cringe now. No, you cannot. No. So it's it just, you have to be able to separate art from artists. And Elliot Page, I mean, I don't think Elliot Page is the person who played James Bond, but if some, no. for some reason they were able to do that yeah. and through the miracle of film, make that work. Maybe Q. The, <laughs> there you go. That, that could work. The, go. T- take that, yeah. Ben Winshaw. Yeah. You're gone. <laughs> uh, okay, there's one more there. Will Spain said, child. Oh, that was oh. the one you read. Oops. Right? Yeah. Okay. We got it. Also, so. someone said Lindsay Lohan, cough, cough. Uh, yeah. By the way, oh, it will point. be, uh, here, here's a fun fact about Lindsay Lohan. Uh, she and me have the same birthday, which is really? uh, July 2nd. Whoa. Yeah. This is a <laughs> birthday present that Brett yes. needed. Uh, wow. So, Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.